Welcome to St. Francis of Assisi, American National Catholic Church, as we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent. Our song of gathering this afternoon is number 297 in your music book, Every Valley, number 297. Would you please stand as you're able? Every valley shall be exalted, and every hill made low. And all God's people shall see together the glory of the Lord. All boys cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway. be exalted and every hill made low and all God's people shall see together the glory of the Lord comfort all my people the time for war is gone the blind shall see the deaf shall hear the lame shall leap for joy Every valley shall be exalted, and every hill made low. And all God's people shall see together the glory of the Lord. Stand upon the mountain top, O oh, lift your voice to the world. Sing joyfully, Jerusalem. Behold, behold your God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every hill made low. And all God's people shall see together the glory of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. So this is Gaudete Sunday. Gaudete in Latin is rejoice. In seminary, uh, after dinner, we would have Gaudeamus, which meant we all rejoiced, right? which is very nice, usually after dinner. <laughs> Welcome to this third Sunday of Advent as we prepare as the birth of our Savior draws nigh. Uh, in the liturgy today, especially in the readings, we're going to hear something about how this, uh, this worldwide uh, retreat that the church offers us during Advent calls us out of our own kind of uh, 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 misery and, uh, and our own melancholy. And uh, even the vestments today may say something to us, right? <clears throat> About uh, the sun that comes in the east, right? And so, so we wear rose on uh, Gaudete Sunday and Leitare Sunday to remind us that our period of waiting is almost at end, right? Our period of waiting is almost concluded and we'll celebrate that great day uh, with the birth of Christ, the anniversary of the birth of Christ. As we do always, we take a moment to call to mind our failings and our shortcomings. We take a moment to remind ourselves that this God who loves us always forgives us and his mercies are always new for us. And together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. And I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. God, the Father of mercies, through the death and resurrection of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, has sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. To the ministry of the church, may God grant you pardon and peace, and I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So we just celebrated the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, and in the liturgical calendar today is the Feast of St. Lucy. Uh, Lucy is uh, a patroness of Sweden, and in some cases, you see young girls will walk around with a crown of lights on their head. So in honor of, uh, of all women, I'm going to ask if the women of the parish will come up and light the uh, third candle of Advent for us. Yeah, come on, please, come on. Yeah, all of you. <laughs> It is a lot of you. It is a lot of you. It's a lot. 
But if you all like put, oh my gosh, it's more than half the church, right? So, uh, so, uh, so th this should tell us something about uh, faith being mother tongue for us, right? Right? So, um, so Patricia, if you take the pink candle there, the rose candle, come on up and put, maybe, maybe what you do is uh, put your hands on each other's uh, shoulders, right? And so, so we'll all somehow be connected, right? So, so we'll all somehow be connected and, uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, and uh, so, uh, um, Nora, if you take that and then uh, we'll pray the prayer. We'll pray the opening prayer, okay? You light it from there and then light it from there. So all of you kind of raise your hands with the ladies here. So with the ladies, right? <clears throat> Almighty God, yep, yep, right? Almighty God, <laughs> it's a little complicated. Almighty God, you sent your son into the world where the wheat must be winnowed from the chaff and evil, cl and, and evil clings even to what is good. Let the fire of your spirit purge us of greed and deceit, so that purified we may find our peace in you, and you and we may delight and you may delight in us. Grant this through him whose coming is certain, whose day draws near, your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Thanks for helping. Thanks, Joyce. It's our first reading. We're good. Mm. Oh, I'll sit down. What you gonna say? So, you, so that was our opening prayer. You can sit down. It's a little confusing. Catholics, we, we just we go from one to the other. So, so uh, our first reading today is from the book of Zephaniah. Uh, we often don't hear this, uh, oh, actually we don't hear this uh, Zephaniah read at Mass except uh, in the three-year cycle on this particular uh, ad, uh, third Sunday uh, of Advent. And so uh, what we're going to do today is hear the word uh, pre uh, um, uh, proclaimed in English and in Spanish. So uh, part of what we do here is we recognize that the language of love doesn't need much translation. However, sometimes to hear the word of God in our own in our own in our own language is uh, is powerful. So, so who's our first readers? Who's doing the English? Who's doing the English? I told you. Lectura del libro de Sofonías Canta, hija de Sion, da gritos de júbilo Israel Gózate y regocíjate de todo corazón, Jerusalén El Señor ha levantado su sentencia contra ti Ha expulsado a todos tus enemigos El Señor será el Rey de Israel en medio de ti Y ya no temerás ningún mal Aquel día dirán a Jerusalén No temas, Sion que no desfallezcan tus manos. El Señor, tu Dios, tu poderoso Salvador, está en medio de ti. Él se goza y se complace en ti. Él te ama y se llenará de júbilo por tu causa, como en los días de fiesta. Palabra de Dios. Señor. Cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the Great and Holy One of Israel. Cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the Great and Holy One of Israel. God indeed is my Savior, I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. Cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Give 
give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds, proclaim how exalted is his name. Cry out with joy and gladness for among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the great and holy one of A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia, 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 Eternal Light, our Son of Justice, shine in all our darkness. Lord Jesus, come. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The crowds who were gathering to be baptized by John asked him, what should we do? In reply, John said to them, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also ask him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or <coughs> false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but the one who, who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. 
His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with, ma with many other exhortations, John proclaimed the good news to the people. Brothers and sisters, the good news of salvation, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> By the words of the Holy Gospel, may our sins be blotted away. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So Betty was a little nervous about doing that. I actually thought we were going to have the uh, reading in English and Spanish, but she did a nice job, right? So I think you did a nice job. She really did, right? So one of the reasons I, I wanted this to happen is so that we get a greater sense of the diversity of the people of God in our midst, right? And so, so what I love about this, uh, as I often say to you, is, is that all those who I love today are hearing the same readings that I'm hearing, right? And, uh, and they're uh, praying the same prayers that I'm praying. And that's an amazing kind of link that we have with each other. Um, these readings that we have for today speak to us again, I think, about the closeness of the Feast of the Incarnation, which is, uh, which is drawing uh, uh, so fast, right? It's, I mean, this weather, you could never, uh, you could, would never believe that, right, with this weather. But in many ways, what we hear today is something that I think that this season of Advent Event may invite us into is a tremendous reflection. This morning after a mass at the hospital, I, I generally talked to my sister in Philadelphia, and so, so I was uh, in the car chatting with her, and uh, she was, we were both, uh, I guess, complaining a little bit about uh, our, our kids, and so, and, uh, and then she said, uh, I just want to get away. I go up to the den and I close the door because I need to get away from <laughs> Ed Thomas, my nephew, and uh, and uh, who you've met. Don't tell him I've said that, right? But he can see it now anyway. But in many ways, uh, so so uh, so I said to her, I said, go to mass and you'll feel better. And she said, you're right. She said, when I go to mass, and she's pretty faithful. She said, I do feel better, and not because anything changes with Thomas, but everything changes with us as a result of that. And that's what we're being asked to do today. In this reading from Zephaniah, Zephaniah is one of the minor prophets during the reign of Josias. And he does kind of nothing but doom and gloom, doom and gloom. The one bright spot in Zephaniah is what we hear today, right? And the reading is exhorting Israel to rejoice because God is in their midst, right? God, the God of the covenant, Yahweh, ego sum quisum, this God is in their midst, and pretty soon you will be singing as if at a festival, right? That's the exhortation. That's the exhortation. For the people of Israel, they think, what are you, out of your mind? We're, we're not happy at all, right? And in many ways, Josiah is reminding them that this is temporary. This season of Advent and these readings call us away from our own egos. They call us away from our own misery. That's the whole thing here. And then in, 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 in Philippians, in Paul, we hear Paul. This is where this Sunday comes comes from, Gaudete. He says, rejoice. Again, I say rejoice, right? That's Gaudete, Gaudete. And so we hear this. Paul in Philippians is in jail. The Romans are trying to figure out how they're going to get rid of him and or kill him because he's shaking up the empire. He's proclaiming a kingdom that they don't know anything about and they don't like it very much, right? And so, so but Paul, from the midst of his captivity, and, and, and by the way, if you think about that, right? So here he is writing, rejoice, rejoice. But the important thing here for us is something that you and I hear often in the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus. To be at peace, to not be anxious about anything, right? Not to worry about anything. And in that might be some dimension of the real joy that we are exhorted to today. This is not a cheap joy. This isn't a canned happiness. This isn't putting on a good face, right? This is a joy that comes from the knowledge that because of the Paschal mystery that Christ's death, resurrection, and his suffering, we, death is, 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 has no more. And so we have this peace that passes all understanding. And then it's so interesting in the Gospel of Luke. Three times we hear this question in the beginning of the Gospel of Luke, right? First, the people come to John the Baptist and say, what should we do, right? And then he tells them. He says, listen, listen to this, because this is maybe where our joy is a little bit too, right? Uh, was it uh, Janis Joplin that said, freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose, right? So, so this idea of divesting ourselves, right? And so he says, if you have two cloaks, give one away, right? 
right? Because if you have, if you have two or three, what are you going to worry about, right? And then he says, if you have something to eat, give it to those who don't, right? And then the tax collectors come, right? This might be a, a message for the IRS, right, <laughs> in many ways, right? But, but the, and, the, and he, says, he says, don't do your job, but don't exhort people either. Don't take more than what you know you should be doing, right? And then the soldiers, the soldiers of all people, right? They come to him, and you can see this hunger on the part of the entire population of wanting to move in closeness to some sense of the divine in their life. And he says the same thing to them. Don't extort people. Don't lie. Don't make things up, right? Because uh, if you do, then they could do their job and then they would benefit from that. So it's the same for us. Every time we, you and I ask the same thing, what should I do, right? It's all there for us, right? We know, that we, know that we know that we have the study guide for the test at the end of our life, right? What should we do? Feed the hungry, right? Give something to drink to the thirsty. Clothe the naked, right? Welcome the stranger. That, it's all there for us, right? And so John is preaching preaching this message, right? And he's saying at some level, your joy and doing what God asks you to do results in divesting yourself from all of those things that keep you bound down. That to me is the message in this Advent, right? And, and, and I think it's a little bit ironic at the end, if, if those of you were listening at the end of the gospel here, right? So, so uh, John the Baptist preached this good news with these and other exhortations. I'm not sure a hellfire and brimstone is an exhortation or that there's good news in that in many ways. But the good news for us, right, is, is that as we prepare ourselves in these final weeks for the, uh, for the incarnation, for the birth of Christ in history and in time, right? We come to celebrate something of, of joy in our preparation for that. This Advent season invites us to look at all of those things which diminish us or we think diminishes us. It, it, it invites us to look at our own sense of what is it that keeps us from joy? It generally is not anything external to us. It's something inside of us, right? What is it that prevents our joy? Those are the stumbling blocks. Those are the things things that Advent invites us to get, to, to get rid of. And perhaps it is a divestment of this total interest in ourself alone, right? I think about this in our society. We come here on Sundays and we listen to this gospel and we listen to, uh, to, the, to the living word of God and it, it, and it always exhorts us to greater acts of love. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the particular uh, 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 pericope is from the gospel, the particular passage. It is always an exhortation to love more radically. And then we go out in the world, right? And then, and then we, we hear about mass shootings or we, we hear about uh, some other tragedy and our hope sinks a little bit, right? And we think, oh, what's the point, right? Well, I think this Advent helps us find the point for us in many ways, right? Or we, we hear, I don't know, uh, I can't, I was just going to try to count the number of Christmas advertisements I've heard about, you know, things that, that and I, then I start to believe that I need them, right? So, so, oh yeah, I must have to have that, right? I've seen so many commercials. Actually, I'm a little embarrassed to say I bought some of those laser lights, right? So, uh, right, but in many ways, right, it's these things that, that we somehow weigh us down, right? And, but the reality is, is that maybe, maybe as we gather today and we hear these words of the readings, it can be this invitation in this last uh, two weeks of, of, uh, of our preparation to go deeper, right? And, and to love more radically and to let go of those things that really don't mean anything, right? And by the way, they're the small things in their life, right? They're the small things. I was asked to, uh, to speak and I thought that I was going to have a whole hour to speak and instead I had 10 minutes. <laughs> I was so annoyed, right? And I was so, I was like, how dare they? Do they know who I am, right? <laughs> and uh, in, in so many ways, right? And, um, and in that moment, it was about it wasn't about what they had asked me to do. It was more about me, right? And, uh, and I thought to myself, and I smile, as, and I'm glad you're laughing with me as well. We have to let go of those things. We have to get lo let go of the little hurts. We have to let go of all of those things that, 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 that John is, is saying to the people who are asking him, what should we do? What should we do? Trust more, trust more, more, love more deeply, right? Hope with greater energy, right? Move in the direction of life, right? Forgive those who maybe think have hurt us. Who knows what's going on in their world, right? Forgive them. Move closer, right, uh, to the relationships that are important to us. Celebrate during this uh, uh, Feast of Christmas the reality of the, the relationship that God's love for us was so profound that he sent his son to be one with us. That's the joy, right? That's the joy. We're not going to find 
minded in things, right? Not, and you know that. I'm not telling you anything that you don't know. It's very temporary. The joy that, that we're being exhorted to, to today is not a cheap joy. It requires that we get ourselves out of the way and that we make room for the other. And the other both with a small O and the capital O, right? And we come to recognize that the origin of our heart's capacity to love resides in God. And then everything that we, we do from there will give glory to God by our very actions. So let us continue in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Let us stand and profess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through God all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day he arose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As a people preparing for the coming of Christ our Savior in time, let us offer our prayers and petitions to God our Father. Our refrain for today will be, Come Lord Jesus. During this time of Christmas preparation and remembering that Jesus is soon coming to us for our reconciliation with God, let us continue to pray for world leaders that they may find ways to reconcile their country's differences and create a truly peaceful world for all. We pray. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For the countries and delegates participating in the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, that their final draft on climate change agreement will be accepted and supported by all countries of the world to protect our <coughs> planet for ourselves and future generations. We pray to the Lord. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. For our local communities and all levels of government, that leaders will put aside their differences and find ways to work together for the protection of the vulnerable and the good of all people, we pray to the Lord. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For the ANCC and all world religions, that they may be blessed with strong spiritual leaders in committed congregations, who not only help each other as companions on the journey, but also reach out to those who need our help and support. We pray to the Lord. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. In periods of doubt and fear, when we have heartaches and setbacks in life, that like Paul, our strong faith in God will sustain us, so that God will know that we are grateful for the good things in our lives, and that we trust in him to guide us and help us on life's journey. We pray to the Lord. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. On this Thursday, Sunday of Advent, we celebrate joy. Joy comes from being loved and overflows into action. That shares that action and joy with those among us. May we, as a community, feel it. We'll feel inspired by joy to perform God's work in our outreach, outreach efforts to our, offer our spiritual and physical comfort to those in need. We pray. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For healing for the sick, those in hospitals, nursing homes, rehabilitation and hospice, and for strength and patience for their caregivers. And are there any sick we should especially remember? Uh, Kathleen and Kathleen. Dave and Chuck. We pray. Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For those who have died, that God, who gives us the promise of eternal life, will grant them fullness of salvation 
and provide comfort to their families? And are there of any of whom we should especially remember? We pray. Come, Come Lord Jesus. Jesus. If you would join me in giving God thanks for Josephine and Andy, who were married on Friday, members of our parish, that God might bring them uh, great uh, joy. Uh, they're not here today. I think they're on their honeymoon. Uh, so uh, let's hope they are anyway. That God will bring them great joy, many years of happiness. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. We pray for all of those who are preparing to uh, celebrate that sacrament, uh, that God's love made incarnate in the person of Jesus Christ may always dwell in their midst. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Come, Come Lord Jesus. Most high, glorious God, we bring you our prayers and petitions, those which we've spoken aloud, and those in the depths of our heart. We ask you to hear and answer them if they be for our good, for we make them in the name of Christ, your Son. Amen. Amen. I, I, there's a prayer that I, if you as a parish community, uh, you can sit down. If you would um, keep in your prayers, um, there's a uh, community, a faith community in Florida who is discerning uh, joining the American National Catholic Church. And so I'm going to make a visit to them at the end of next month. So, um, so keep them in your prayers, all right? Because it's a very difficult decision as it was for Our Lady of Guadalupe in, uh, in Long Branch. It's a very difficult uh, decision, as you know, to somehow realize that God might be calling you somewhere else. And so, so pray for them earnestly, okay? Thank you. Please turn to number 656 for Christ be our light, 656. <clears throat> Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light for the world to see. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church, gather today. Longing for peace, our world is troubled. Longing for hope, many despair. Your word alone has power to save us. Make us your living voice. Christ, be our light. Shine in our hearts, shine through the dark. Christ, be our light, shine in your church, gather today. Longing for food, many are hungry. Longing for water, many still thirst. Make us your bread, broken for others. Shared until all are fed. Christ, be our light. Shine in our hearts. Shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light. Shine in your church. Gather today. Longing for shelter. Us your building sheltering others was made of living stone. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church, gather today. Many the people, many the
the hearts that yearn to belong. Let us be servants to one another, making your kingdom come. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church, gather today. I was telling Antonino and Marco to be joyful up here, and so now I'm smiling. But also, uh, as you know, Pat is studying for the diaconate, so this is his uh, kind of first time assisting me. So if he moves my hat around my head, uh, just uh, uh, I'll fix it, all right? So, uh, so pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name. For our name. Lord, may the continual offering of the Eucharistic sacrifice carry out the mystery of our redemption and accomplish your saving work, uh, your saving work among us. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the one foretold by all of the prophets, whom the Virgin Mother awaited with love beyond all telling, the one whose coming John the Baptist heralded, and whose presence he proclaimed. The same Lord invites us to prepare with joy for the mystery of his birth, so that when he comes, he may find us watchful in prayer, our hearts filled with wonder and praise. And so with angels and archangels, with all the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending chorus of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the You are truly blessed, O God of holiness. You accompany us with love as we journey through life. Blessed too is your Son, Jesus Christ, who is present among us and whose love gathers us together. As once he did for his disciples, Christ now opens the scriptures for us and breaks the bread. Great and merciful Father, we ask you to send down your Holy Spirit to hallow these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the eve of his passion and death, while at table with those he loved, he took bread, gave you thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to all of those whom he loved, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. And handing the cup to his disciples, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. 
And so, Father most holy, we celebrate this memory of Christ your Son, whom you led through suffering and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection and a place at your right hand. Until Jesus, our Savior, comes again, we proclaim the work of your love, and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of eternal blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ entrusted to us. Through the power of your spirit of love, include us now and forever among the members of your Son, whose body and blood we share. Strengthen in unity those you have called to this table, together with the patriarchs of Alexandria, Antioch, Constantinople, Jerusalem, and Rome, George, our bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and all your holy people. May we follow your paths in faith and hope and radiate our joy and trust to all the world. Be mindful of our brothers and sisters and all those who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith only you can know. Lead them to the fullness of the resurrection and gladden them with the light of your face. When our pilgrimage on earth is complete, welcome us into your heavenly home where we shall dwell with you forever. There with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles and the Martyrs, St. Nicholas and St. Lucy, and all your saints, we shall praise you and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety. As we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. <laughs> Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us your peace.
My sisters and brothers, this is Jesus, our Lamb of God. This is Jesus who invites each and every one of us into the experience of God's love for us and how happy are we to be called to His Supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Here at St. Francis, each and every one of you are welcome into full participation in the sacrament of the altar. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Please turn to number 293. O come, O come, Emmanuel, 293. Oh, 
dark shadow put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. O come, desire of nations, find in one the hearts of sad division cease and before us our king of peace rejoice rejoice Emmanuel shall come to you O Israel O come O come Emmanuel Ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O from on high who ordered all things mightily to us the path of knowledge show and teach us in her ways to go rejoice rejoice Emmanuel shall come Let us pray. We implore your mercy, O Lord, that the power of these divine mysteries may free us from sin and prepare us for the approaching feast of Christmas. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. Be seated for a moment, <clears throat> if you would. So, um, so um, what was I going to say? Um, oh, I know what I was going to say. Uh, Josephine and Andy are in the back. So they were just married and they came to Mass. Isn't that nice? So give them a great applause, right? And Jaden and Lucas, they were, uh, you should have seen how handsome they were in their tuxedos, right? So, right? Did you get to make some stars? Um, next week, our children, where's Sister Maria and Kate, right? Um, is it next week, our children are going to uh, sing uh, for us? And uh, I think instead of the homily, so isn't that nice, right? So right, so right, right, right. You shouldn't laugh so hard, right? Right. Uh, uh, so please come at 11:30, and uh, and the children will uh, will sing after the gospel. So that'll be nice, right? So that'll be wonderful, right? Um, uh, there are um, generally we have a. 
uh, we sell wreaths as a fundraiser for the parish, but Kathy, our council, parish council president, as you know, was in a serious accident and is still recuperating. She prays for us all the time. I just spoke to her. She misses you terribly. And so she is making her way back. So be at peace about that. But in the meantime, Joanne and Ross have bought beautiful personalized Christmas, Christmas ornaments for your tree. And it says St. Francis of Assisi. So we're asking for a donation for those, uh, and that will that will help uh, in terms of. Uh, so thank you so much for those. Thank you so much for for that. Right, thank you for all of that you do. I didn't realize that there were gift uh, things on the tree, and they're gone already. So so um, so, um, and Allison's clapping her hands. She's like, "Thank be to God!" Right. Uh, these gifts will be distributed uh, to those in need in Newark. Uh, so please come next week if you want to help wrap. Right. Uh, 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 You were very busy. Very, very. Can you imagine? She was very busy, right? We'll, we'll, don't worry. We'll find something for you, right? So uh, don't worry, just me. Um, uh, our Christmas schedule next Wednesday is the final Wednesday of Advent, and we've been meeting here at seven for Mass, and uh, and so it is. Is it next Wednesday? Yeah. And is it? Or do we have one more? Is the next one? Well, one more, sorry. Uh, so come and join us anyway. But the last Wednesday of the month will be a healing mass. So if you'd like to make the sacrament of reconciliation uh, um, um, uh, or you want to uh, come for healing, we'll be using the uh, oils of the sick, right? So you don't have to be physically sick, right? So, so, uh, so come and join us for that. Um, we celebrate uh, the, um, the mass in the night exactly at midnight on Christmas Eve. So if you can join us for that. I keep saying, I feel a little like uh, Frank Sinatra, it's my last appearance, but, but, uh, but I don't think I'm getting, I'm getting older, I don't think I'll make many more uh, New Year's Masses since I'm usually in my pajamas by nine, but I will be here at uh, midnight this year uh, for Midnight Mass, and then Father Gidi will celebrate the Mass of Christmas Day. On January 3rd, it will be the anniversary of Father Gidi's ordination to the priesthood, and so he'll be uh, celebrating a Mass of Thanksgiving that day. So please join us for that, all right? So, so that's nice. Uh, it's a wonderful time of life in the church, right? It's just a wonderful time of life. And, and it is a, a God who brings us new life, right? So uh, I know that there's some people who are here with us and getting married. Do you want to tell us who you are? You want to? Yeah. So. <laughs> That was wonderful. That was, that was perfect. That was perfect. We don't we don't know who you are, but right, right. So you always sounded like you were from Minnesota a little, huh? Right. So tell us who you are. I'm Jonathan. Jonathan, and they'll be married this Saturday. So pray for them, right? Pray for them. Other, other. Oh, Pat. Our uh, landlord came uh, by last week and uh, the and then just reminded us that a uh, Oh, that's right. That's right. Carol's upstairs, up, up at the bigger church if you can attend, right? So, yeah. Okay, congratulations. Tell us who you are. Paul and Diane. Paul and Diane, congratulations. Congratulations, very nice. Next year, congratulations, very nice. Who's that with you? Who's with you? Hi, Vincent. That's right. Hi, Vincent. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And we have two, we have two uh, new parishioners who will be married here in the parish. And so, I don't know if you've met them yet, right? So, tell us. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. And sometimes I'm a little delayed. But <laughs> here in the parish, so it's very nice, it's very nice. It's very nice. Any other announcements that I'm missing? Oh, the, f the electors meeting after mass. Please, please, please. Um, Jerry gave me a note and I almost forgot. Um, we, you, the parish, always uh, are very generous in terms of uh, uh, the appointments for the great feasts of the church. And so please, um, you can, um, Father Judy sent out a note about buying uh, flowers for the, for the altar for Christmas. So you can uh, donate those in memory of a loved one, uh, living or deceased, uh, whatever you want. But, but, but please help us uh, beautify the church for, uh, for, uh, for Christmas and, uh, uh, and, uh, 
it always looks so beautiful uh, in here. Jerry and Silly do such a nice job. I never, I'm always uh, so pleasantly surprised when I come in uh, to Mass on Sunday, right? So, so it's nice. So, so please do that. Um, and then uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know how we'll do that. Uh, how, how do we do that? How will we? Oh, that'd be wonderful. So Jerry has a good idea. We don't usually, as you know, you don't get envelopes from us, right? So, uh, right? so we don't send them, right? All right, but if you take a blank envelope, maybe we'll have some here next week. And if you just put flowers on it and the name of the person that you want to dedicate that to, and then what we'll do at the Mass of Christmas Eve and on Christmas Day, we'll bring them to the altar and we'll pray for them. How's that, all right? So, so we'll have uh, blank envelopes next week for you. If you're not going to be here next week and you want to do that anyway, uh, we'll, uh, Karen and Joe will be in the back. Raise your hands. And, uh, and we can write down the name. How's that, all right? So, all right, good. All right, good, thanks. You didn't know that, right? So, just a fair warning, if we see you twice, we put you to work, right? So, so uh, and I think, yeah, Marco, sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I have, um, I have Lou's pie, I have Andy and Josephine's pie, and I have sure. Mr. Ryan's pie. That's I just wanted to get the pumpkin and the apple out of the way, so don't worry, they're coming. Uh, this is probably going to be the last week I'm taking orders uh, because I'm going to be delivering next week and Christmas Eve. So that's when the rest of you will get your advice. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Thanks for that. How much uh, you raised for cancer awareness, right? Is it cancer? What are you raising the money for? Cancer? Alzheimer's. Oh, Alzheimer's. Very good. Mm, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> the money is going for Alzheimer's uh, care. So that's very nice. And I was joking with Marco. I forgot. So, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 <laughs> um, so the Lord be with you. If you stand, I'll give you the blessing. May Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go forth from this place in great peace and joy to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. As we go forth, let us join in number 300, people. Look east. We will be doing verses 1, 2, and 4 on this, okay? We're going to skip verse 3, verses 1, 2, and 4. People, look east, the time is near of the crowding of the year. Make your house fair as you are able. Trim the heart at the table people look east and sing today love our guests is on the way pharaohs be glad the earth is bare what more seed is planted there Give up your strength, the seed to nourish, that in course the flower may flourish. People look east and sing today, love the roses on the way.